Hello and welcome to On Lit If I Want To. I'm Andrew Maury of Dre Renee Knits and this is where I try to answer your questions about knitting mostly, sometimes some sewing. I don't really answer questions about sewing. I just talk about sewing. I am not qualified to answer questions about sewing. Spinning, also not super qualified, but I do chat about it. Um, and all things making, so welcome. And today I have a brand new make on. I just finished, this is the Studio Tunic from So Liberated. It's a really cute little hanger hook back here. And amazing pockets with a little extra one and a little pen pocket. Oh, I should put pen. Boop. Um, so super stoked about finishing this. I just finished it yesterday actually and I am wearing it with my fuzzy on my lip. Um, Winter's Beach cardigan. I still have a fuzzy on my lip. Got it. Um, so yeah, this is knit out of Hedgehog Fibers Tweety and it was in the 80s here on Monday and today the high is 50. <laughs> so a little bit of a change in weather but I'm not complaining because I get to wear my sweater with this, which is like my ideal. I knew I was gonna like this tunic, but it's my perfect wear with a cardigan style little tunicky dressy thing. So I'm super stoked. I'm already planning on sewing at least one more, probably multiple. And I just love that. I love when you can use a pattern again and again, because it's just so good. I have linked to both Winter's Beach Cardigan and the Studio Tunic below, as I know some of you will want to be able to check them out. And let's get into some questions. Question number one. Um, my question is not so much about knitting, more about style or knitwear. I like that you sport a piece of knitwear in every episode. Do you also put on knitwear other days of the week too? I ask because often when I see pictures of knitters, I'm surprised at how many are in t-shirts than in sweaters. So just wondering what you normally do. I am very, very, very pro wear what you make. I It took me a little while to do it though. When I really got back into my knitting, so I learned how to knit when I was a kid, but I knit like a bear blanket for my teddy bear and never even bound it off <laughs> um, that sat in a drawer for years and years and when I was about 17 is when I jumped back into knitting right after I'd graduated high school and became super obsessed and knit and knit and knit but I didn't wear my knits especially my sweaters a ton at first I think it took a little bit of getting comfortable with it especially like post high school that can be a confusing time for dressing yourself, especially the first eight years of my schooling, I had to wear a uniform. So it took me a while to figure out how to dress myself in general. And then having the confidence to wear things I made. I think the first time you do it, there can kind of be a feeling of like a spotlight on you. Like everyone's going to know I made this. And that's not true, by the way. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, just like a nervousness. I mean, and that might just be me. I don't know if anybody else shared or has shared those feelings. Um, but then once I really, I think, geez, really early on, I think I ended up challenging myself to try and wear one hand knit most days, um, especially in the cooler months. So I would always try to wear something that I made, whether it was just a shawl or a cowl or socks, whatever it was, just trying to wear something I had made. And that really quickly became a practice for me. And it is very, very rare that I'm not wearing at least one thing that I've made every day, whether that be knit or sewn. But usually I manage to wear something hand knit most days of the year. So I am, yeah, I wear my stuff very much. I've barely even, I mean now, cause of the pandemic, I haven't done a trunk show in a really long time, but there's a lot of things that I have either knit two of, so I can have one, for trunk shows and one for me to just wear because I don't want to feel like I can't wear the things I make. Um, so yeah, I absolutely wear my knits and I'd love to hear from all of you. Is there 
How do you feel about wearing your hand nets? Do you feel good about it? Do you feel a little nervous about it? I mean, I've said it before, but I feel the most like myself when I'm wearing stuff I've made. It's just lost my way to use my words. <laughs> um, I just, I've never wanted to necessarily look and dress just like everybody else and maybe that was having to wear a uniform for all those years but i think having the opportunity to make something that nobody else will have exactly like you you know um even if we use the same yarn and stuff like that like when it's made by our own hands there's just these little nuances that become all our own and i just find that really exciting and to be able to leave the house feeling just like 100 like you um is a pretty cool thing so yes i wear all the things i knit regularly and i hope that you do too <laughs> all right next question i fin finally mastered the tubular cast on yay um from watching your demos and feel very empowered good for you I wonder if you have any thoughts about how interchangeable cast on methods are for sweaters in particular. If a pattern calls for a long tail cast on and I do a tubular one instead, will it be too stretchy since long tail isn't as stretchy as tubular? As a relatively new knitter, I'm always nervous about making even minor alterations like that as I'm concerned the designer has a reason for the cast on they've chosen and I might accidentally alter fit. Appreciate any insights you have. Um, I think that cast ons and bind offs are an excellent place to start modifications and using what you love the best because generally speaking you don't really ever want a tight cast on or bind off uh, not that I can think of um so I think subbing in a tubular is a great idea especially if it is for a one by one ribbing if you're using a regular tubular cat long tail cast on or for two by two as long as you know how to um, adjust your stitches. I have a video for that that you can find in my knitting tutorials. Um, so totally, I think you can swap those in as long as they're also starting with a similar ribbing. Um, I don't think you have to worry about it being too stretchy. And I think that it will help boost confidence to make other little adjustments. And I think the more that we do modify and play around um, Another one would be maybe swapping in the style of short rows you like instead of maybe what the pattern calls for. Little things like that can just be really empowering to make even bigger modifications that might make that finished item more fun to knit for you, better fit, um, and uniquely yours. So absolutely i would say jump in and try it out worst comes to worst you can undo it i think reading a little further into the pattern really looking at the photos and making sure okay is there any reason why the designer why this could mess up anything but i don't i can't really imagine that with the tubular cast on um or most cast ons and bind offs so you're going to be pretty safe there um so yeah i think you should go for it Next question. I love a lot of your cardigan patterns, but I have a hard time finding good buttons, so I haven't knit any. In a recent episode, you were wearing your stone crop cardigan and were showing two other cardigans and the buttons on all three were so perfect. Could you share where you get your buttons from and your process of buying them? Do you buy per project or do you buy when you see a nice button? If it's the latter, what is your rule of thumb on how many buttons to buy? Um, so you can also, by the way, just knit cardigans that don't need buttons. <laughs> like this one. I don't, you know, I have a couple cardigan patterns that don't even call for buttons because I just wear them open and they're not ones I would close. Um, but yes, so I, one of my favorite, if you're just looking for a particular project, I really love... Um, my friend Jess from La Mercerie is her shop name. She has an online shop. She actually has a brick and mortar now too, but it's a yarn shop and they also have some haberdashery, including buttons and her button selection. I love. So I think maybe I showed the Straya cardigan. I'm kind of guessing. 
um, is the video that you're talking about and the buttons for that are from her shop. Um, so I definitely recommend checking out her buttons. Otherwise, one of my favorite places to buy buttons is actually at Rhinebeck every year. There's always a vintage button booth. And so that's really fun because you're buying vintage buttons and they come on little strips of paper. I'm actually gonna grab my little button thing. So I have a couple, I have another one. I don't know where it is. Back to that whole organization thing. So I also have a jar of just loose buttons. I am one of those people that like every time if I buy a ready to wear garment and it comes with extra buttons, I throw them all in a jar and keep them for if a button falls off. But also I very rarely, I think I've had two buttons fall off of something like in my whole life, but I always still keep those because you never know. So I have a collection of like random buttons in a jar. Um, I'm, I really wonder where that is now. I think it's over there. Uh, but I also have this little sweet vintage tin thing my husband got me full of random buttons. So these are always like so solid, you know, just a basic wood button but a lot of these again are vintage um okay here we go so these are like the ones from Rhinebeck I've actually used some of these on a shirt I made so I grab buttons not just for knitting but also for sewing um so these ones would be more something I would use for a sewn shirt and generally speaking, I buy between six and 12 buttons when I'm buying buttons, unless I know the project and can kind of guess. But you know, it's kind of like, how do you buy fabric or yarn or buttons or things that you don't necessarily have a plan for yet? Um, I do have like some tucked away little amounts that I like to use um, for that kind of purchasing. So yeah, buttons, usually about six to 12. Here's some more little like mismatched vintage buttons. I'm not great at this whole <laughs> camera deal trying to get it to focus. But again, like random, also just like random. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what I do. I have um, the shop I'll link to, the Mercerie that I think has great, if you're like, this is the cardigan I wanna knit. Like here's, I don't know what this is from, just big old button. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop doing that. Uh, but anyways, I go to that shop or I um, love to find little vintage buttons. You could see if you're, if you have any local button shops, sometimes I love when I go to a town that actually has like a button shop. There's a great one in Vancouver that some of these are from from when we I taught at Knit City years ago um so yeah and then I might like stock up on a few special ones that catch my eye otherwise it is kind of nice until you have the project you know you're gonna do so that you can get buttons that go with that project um and as far as button size I don't think I have like a go-to I usually just hold it up and go like, yeah, this would be good for like a fingering weight cardigan or these big buttons might be better for a bulky one, you know? All right. If anybody else has any where they love to source buttons, feel free to throw that below. Okay. I'm knitting the DRK every day as my first sweater and I'm using embroidery thread for lifelines. The lifelines keep slipping out of my knitting. I've tried tying knots at the ends, but those end up slipping into my knitting and don't allow the fabric to stretch when I try on the sweater. How do you gauge how long to make your lifelines to avoid this? So I would definitely make them longer. If they're slipping into your knitting, they're too short. So just leave a much longer tail on them. Again, it's embroidery floss, which thankfully is pretty inexpensive, or you can use like a smooth sock yarn um that's not fuzzy and you could use like if you have a leftover ball of that which most of us have like little balls of that hanging around um then you could just use that but yeah just use a longer one and the way to know if it's long enough is to stretch that sweater out and before you snip it and see if you need to pull a little extra length so that no matter how far you stretch it when you're trying it on it's not getting sucked into the fabric um 
you there's a secondary question here is it okay to leave all of your lifelines in until the end of a project or do you find it's better to use one that you move down as you go you can really do whatever works best for you i personally just use the one and keep moving it as i go um just so that i don't have a million lifelines and i don't have to go through as much embroidery floss obviously you can reuse it uh but yeah i just move it as i go because if it's all good, then I don't, you know, I know I won't have to tear back that far. Um, and I also just want to reiterate, I do not recommend using dental floss. I um, know sometimes that gets suggested. I don't use dental floss because it's not stable. Dental floss can generally be um, stretched. And when you are trying to get those stitches back onto your needle and the material they're on is stretching as you're trying to do that, it can be a little flustering. Guess how I know. So I don't re recommend using dental floss. I think that embroidery floss is my personal favorite or a smooth sock yarn that I happen to have like a leftover ball of in my stash. Um, but yeah, so there you go. I hope that helps. Just make them longer. And last question already, was curious about hats and how to secure the handmade pom-pom. I recently made a pom-pom and attached it to the hat, but it seems so floppy. How do you attach yours? Thank you so much. So they are floppy. I actually grabbed two of mine. And you know, that is, that's their nature. And like, this is a big pom-pom and it is heavy so it is going to flop if you don't like the flop you would basically like this is so dense I wish that y'all could just like feel <laughs> I used a lot of yarn like now that I'm really revisiting this but look how cute it is it has little bits of color from the different it's all these different yarns I used and did like little blocks of color in there I never know I'm like block that light so you can see um so kind of big floppy oh. heavy this one i used um surrey alpaca so this one although it looks really dense is actually much lighter weight i don't know why i can't see my words right now again though it's still gonna be floppy um so the way i attach them i do it the same for every hat so i you know, when you're making your pom-pom, you tie a circle of yarn around the middle and tighten it and then you trim, 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 trim is how I make them at least. So that yarn that I used to tie the middle is what I'm also going to use to attach to my hat. And I always do it with a bow so that if I ever decided, I actually don't like pom-poms anymore, which I don't see happening, but you never know. Or this dropped in the mud and I need to wash it, but this crazy 10 pound pom pom I put out here, I do not want to get that wet. Uh, it didn't get dirty. Then I could just untie it, take off the pom pom, wash the hat and put the pom pom back on. Um, it's also nice if you're gifting the hat, like it just gives the recipient, they get to decide, do I want the pom pom on there or not? Um, by the way, this is Vanilla Fog. This is an oldie but goodie, a marled, color blocked, um, brioche hat that I designed years and years ago and then this is minted this was our insta insta not insta this was our weekend at a long challenge hat from I think two years ago and um, again I use a bow to tie it inside the hat now to stabilize it more one option could be to thread um, another bit of yarn going through perpendicular to your first set of yarn like a little ink so that you almost have like four posts and then that would secure it to the top of the hat a bit more so that it's more sturdy instead of quite so floppy um, but there you go I like to tie it on with a non-permanent bow so that I can take the pom-poms off, readjust, change out pom-poms. Maybe you really love making pom-poms and now you can decide, hey, today I want this pom-pom, but tomorrow I'm gonna use that one. Just leaves the options open. Uh, so that is it. We just finished up two 
knit alongs, the DRK March to May knit along and the Straya Hat knit along weekend challenge. Um, so that's super exciting. So right now the only knit along going on is the Inclinations Call knit along, which will go through the summer through till August. I should say summer here. <laughs> um, so I thought I would end this episode. I did a little sneak peek of my sewing journal. If you have been watching these episodes, you know I like to keep journals. I have a spinning journal, which I showed in one episode. I showed exactly kind of how I lay it out and everything. Um, but I showed a little peek of my sewing journal on Instagram the other day for Me Made May. And I actually had kind of fallen out of the practice. Um, I just was doing so much sewing, I kind of couldn't keep up with documenting. And then I had a dry spell. I wasn't sewing as much. I was doing a lot more spinning. Um, there's only so much free time in the day. But now I, of course, have been sewing a bunch again and realized how much I go back and reference this because I cannot ever leave well enough alone and tend to make adjustments and hack into patterns and kind of fiddle with them and so being able to go back and see what I had done was so helpful that I was like okay I really need to keep this up so I just thought I would show a little sneak peek Andrew's sewing projects um so this is just a really basic my sister got it for me it's uh i don't even know the brand paperage um it's just a really basic lined notebook nothing super fancy very cute color though and what we do is i have a little polaroid camera and i have my husband take a little picture of me and i just tape the little polaroid in with some washi tape and then I always put what the pattern was, the size I made, and the fabric I used. I struggle with the whole fabric thing as a knitter. I am very used to ball bands telling me exactly what my yard is. And I really wish they did that for fabric because if I go to my local shop and buy any or order any, I feel like once I've washed it, I always, that's another practice I do, I always wash my fabric the second I get it so that when I wanna sew something, I'm not like, oh man, I gotta wash the fabric. It's just ready to go. Um, but then it's always like, okay, hope I remember what that fabric was. So anyways, that's what I do. I just put my little, um, Polaroids in here and any notes that I might have. Da, da. Da, do. Um, so yeah, nothing that fancy or technical, but I find it super helpful. There are some in here that I probably should have taken better notes on. Like this one, this is a dress. This is the orchard's dress um, that I ended up doing this crazy patchwork thing with. And the amount, I added another tier. I just like really fiddled with the whole thing. Um, probably should have taken a bit better notes. I also did look, <laughs> it's got a little crazy here. Um, this is the Nora Tink and that's another one where I color blocked it out of, I love to use up any fabric that is in my stash, um, including the remnants. So I really like to do kind of like patchwork color block stuff to use those up. And I had made pants um, and a dress and a top out of these other two fabrics where I had just like a little bit left and I managed to get half of the pattern out of each of those two remaining fabrics. And I wish you could see better in the picture. This is like this hot pink linen on the back and then this really neutral pale pink linen on the front. Um, but it was a really, really fun challenge because I had to make color blocked bias tape and a color blocked ruffle and it turned out so well. It was so much fun. Um, so again, this is just how I document it all so that if I want to go back and make something or if I'm like this was just a similar style I wonder if I needed to make any adjustments as a jumping off point um so yeah that's what I do and I'm trying to now like I just finished my studio tunic I have not put a picture in here yet but I've already started writing down all the information so I don't forget that until we take a little Polaroid which I will probably see if Spicy Pete can do after I finish up this video so 
Anything else? Any other news? I am just knitting away over here. I have got some new sweaters going. I have a new cowl idea. I have a new shawl coming in June that we photographed. So it's about all that's going on here. I am hoping to maybe a little more sewing done because I have been fully bitten by the sewing bug again. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's all. So I hope that you have a fabulous weekend. Let me know what you're working on in the comments below. And I hope to see you back here next week. Happy making.